Welcome to another episode uh, where we're going to talk about some bourbon that um, may or may not be from the state of Kentucky, Charles. Hey, like, yeah, right? Who? Yeah, it, this? Um, Penelope? What the hell is this? Oh, oh, you like my hat? <laughs> Daytona. My You're, Daytona hat. When did you change hat? Well, you know, my father, uh, this was, you know, you know, I'm going to deviate here, so just get off of this. You know, we always talk about the stories, right? We talk about the stories, and, and I, you probably know a little something about Daytona. Hey, high wide enhancement in the championship groove, bobbing and weaving, picking up speed with every turn of the wheel, into the first and out of the second, representing every color of the rainbow. Ladies and gentlemen, as they come by the grandstands this time, I want you to stand up, stomp your feet, clap your hands, and send them on their way. Yeah. Yeah. Here no? we go, the Daytona 500, baby. So, dude, I've done quite a many, quite a few, <laughs> yeah. quite a few. Yeah. So, no, let's talk about some bourbon. <laughs> let's talk about bourbon. Hey, hey, um, this one is really uh, interesting. This is actually my, this is our first uh, foray into Good. this Penelope. It's been around a little while. Very new, uh, very new to the market, if you will. Um, these are some uh, young people, I think. I, I, I say young people because I'm old. Um, kind of got together, started a distillery, or, if you will, or a, a company, uh, sourcing MGP uh, products, um, using our friends at Bargetown Bourbon Company as, as, uh, to help them with, uh, uh, I, I'm thinking, the blending and, and uh, bottling of this thing, because it does say that it was, it was uh, bottled in, in Bargetown Bur uh, Country. So uh, four grain, right? Yeah. Corn, yeah. rye, wheat, and malted barley. But interesting on the back, and it's, you know, with, with labels on, on bourbon, let's, let's digress a little bit here. Yep. Let's talk about labeling on, yep. on any types of whiskey or bourbon. It is the most scrutinized yes. labeling there is in the world. Yep. Federally, federally controlled, there are certain things that has to be there. Certain things have to be disclosed and, and so forth. So, yes. So, as got? I go to the barrel thing here, right, it says um, uh, this batch was blended from a three bourbon mash builds and are aged to a minimum of four years in an American oak barrel. Each barrel was handcraftedly selected and blended into a single batch to create a unique offering. So that's what they're doing. They're craft, craft blending. Craft blending to get to a certain thing. You know, and, and listen, if you follow, if you kind of follow uh, the Bartstown Bourbon Company's uh, stuff with the Fusion series and so forth, you kind of understand that, that, that it's, it's kind of a new model. It's a new model. So when they say they use three different mash builds, so what I take from that, and, and, and again, going to the front of the label, it's three different mash builds of four grain juice, right? Yes. And so they, they're using this one, and they barrel this, barrel that, but it's all across in the same deal, right? So I think they describe that here. They right. pick um, three mash builds aged at a minimum of four years each. Yeah. Right? Right. Each barrel was... Carefully, hand selected. Hand selected. So anyway, um, so small batch. It, it, it's small batch, right? Small batch, but it kind of goes down the line, if you will, of of um, the Fusion series or or some of the other things that Bardstown Bourbon Company is doing. And, and it's not even them. It's it's a lot of people. Barrel Bourbon, Stellum. You, you can pick all of them where they're 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 blending and pulling together different barrels, different batches, and, and bringing them together, marrying them to get to something. And, and you're, boy, you're telling, you're working that on the nose. Yeah, and so it's got some great stuff. You're probably not going to smell it because you're still at the damn racetrack smelling <laughs> hot dogs and hamburgers, right? <laughs> Burning rubber and gasoline, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So this Penelope is just, um, this one being, the, and this is a, Barrel strength, okay, this is 115.8, almost 116 proof. I don't get that on the nose. I, like, so I'm not getting the ethanols, the heads and the tails that we talk about, uh, the heads, which is the first part of 
what comes off the still <clears throat> and the tails, which is the last part, not getting any of the heads and tails. So uh, during the distillation process of, of this particular juice, um, I don't, I'm not smelling any of that. But sometimes, Charles, it can be covered by oh. the barrel. So I'm getting some sweet, I'm almost getting a candy scent here. And the reason I'm dissecting it. Oh, you're going to really like that. Oh my God. I got that taste. first sip. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. So that's a shock to palate, but yet you're going wow. So talk to me here. I, I got, listen, okay, so the 115, almost the 116 proof, it's there, right? Uh, but not in a bad way. But the flavor explosion just, it just, it explodes. It just fills your palate. Just, and, and I had, I had fruits and florals and things going on and it was just, it was overwhelming. The that first was, that sip. was your first sip. First sip, a little overwhelming. And, and what it immediately, you know, we talk about those, those things, you, you know, things that you kind of, your experiences, what I experienced there was, and I hate to do this, but it's almost that fusion series where you get those big, gigantic flavors. So, so that's I'm what getting, I got. I'm getting candy. It brings me back to my childhood. Not the liquor. We didn't drink liquor when I was a kid. No, but the candy part of it. Um, it reminds me very much of a candy bar. Uh, I'm not getting chocolate though, right? So I'm getting the finish of a of a nougat, mm. right? And I've said that before on another show, but I'm actually it's it's not a nutty nougat; it's a caramely caramel type. caramel. This this is absolute. It is a sweetness. There is no doubt about that. Um, if you rank this in a sweetness level, you know this is. Well above mid-range and, and a sweetness on the palate. What I get is this finish, though, that just really hangs there with you. It's it's um, it's spiciness. It's um, it's uh, it's it's um. I get cinnamon. I get. I wish I had the mash. I mean, I get to know how much rise in it. Yeah, I get a little right? bit of pepper because I'm getting some rise, right? So I'm gonna, out of respect of our our friends at. Bardstown Bourbon, uh, Steve Nally there, uh, Dan, uh, Nick. I mean, we, we're friends with a lot of those guys there. Um, out of respect for that, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be one of my top tens, Charles. This, this is, oh, wow. I'm glad I grabbed this. I, this was the last bottle on the shelf down there, by the way. But um, uh, cinnamon, pepper, black pepper, and then... Um, I'm lost here. I'm lost with the... No, so I, it is one of those bourbons, right, that you just taste and you know you like it, but you can't let describe me, let it. Me try, let me try one thing. Let, let, let me grab that over. Here. Right? I'm just, I'm just, I'm curious. I'm, I hope this doesn't right. just ruin it. I'm so, going to put a drop of water here. So just. Charles is putting a drop of water in it. It is right now at 115.8. Uh, obviously, we don't know what one drop of water is going to do. But uh, if you're sitting around uh, sampling bourbon in the evening and uh, it doesn't give you quite what you're looking for in that bottle, sometimes we'll do this. We'll put one drop in it. Uh, that's what the ice does, right. ladies and gentlemen. The yeah. ice actually melts, and as that ice melts, the flavors of that bourbon move throughout the melting of that ice. Uh, if you've ever been to one of our tastings and heard Charles talk about um, how he takes his Yeti tumbler, hey. right? That's on the table, by the way. Woohoo! And um, um, it could be any other kind of tumbler. Maybe we all don't have the kind of money Charles has. But all right. at the end of the day, uh, that ice melts and that flavor profile moves. So, Charles? I tell you, one drop of water, here's what happened. Uh, here's what happened, and you, you'll be able to sample this. But um, the nose it, changed. It's it's soft. It, it did soften it. It it really smoothed it out. So it's it's interesting. Sometimes you put that one drop in, and sometimes it you it, the 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 juice kind of just brightens and gets bolder. 
this got softer, and and I think the the um, it the, almost has the, a, to me the nose changed. Yes, and it has a Scottish like a it, it a just, moss a mossy earthy earthy herbal herbal. Yeah, one drop of water, and uh, I think it, it it lowered that proof just a smidgen. And oh wow, yeah. It did not damage the flavor overall profile. No, so smoothed it out tremendously, actually brought out some of the nut flavor that I was trying to pick up. Uh, Charles, mm. I'm liking this. Man, folks over at Penelope Bourbon. Wow. I'm Great gonna go, job. I'm gonna go one more before we end the show. Mm. Uh, because sometimes it can ruin it. And uh, Sometimes it can make it better. So 115, we probably proofed it down to 100, guessing. Uh, let's do one more. On the nose. Again, change the nose again. So I'm getting a bacon, not a bacon, a, 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 a baking. Baking. Spice. I was going to say bacon. I'm getting right. a couple so of this is <laughs> like sage. Wow. All right, hang on. You know, this is really cool. I'm a big deal. I love these four grain deals. A lot of people don't. They they, they don't. They shy away from a four grainer. Killed it. Really? Killed it. Four grainer. Four grain Penelope. Um, do not put ice with this. Um, killed it. It killed it with two drops of water. Uh, I'm going to tell you to hang on to it. Uh, please experiment like we do. Um, I think that oh, you're going to find it. It, it, did. it did. It flattened it. It killed it. It flattened it out. Yeah. Flattened it right out. Well. Now I know what a drain pour is, right? No, no. No, no. no. It's, it's not appealing to my palate. Uh, from with, where you started. From where it, we started. I would almost, I would drink this with before we started, but knowing where we were, yeah. That right there with two drops in it. Well, now, mind you, we're starting with a half ounce of yeah. bourbon yeah. Uh, with two drops. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to do anything with it, uh, might be really good to mix with a ginger ale. I can right? see this one with right? a ginger. Yeah. A ginger ale might be good with this. Yeah. Well, look, uh, Penelope bourbon. Uh, good job, folks. We love it. Love this. This is our this is our first one uh, along the line. I'm sure it's not going to be our last one. Awesome. Bourbon lifestyle, my friend. Cheers. Cheers.